welcome to my um, video. So as promised, we're going to have a look today at Jenkins and Sonocube together. So let's get started. So in Jenkins, if we go to manage Jenkins, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So if we go to manage plugins and we go to installed, And we search for Sonar, you'll see there's a Sonar Cube scanner for Jenkins. Now I've already installed this, that's why it's in under installed. So this doesn't come with Jenkins by default. You, you have to install it yourself. So when you first set the, all of this up, you'll see that Sonar Cube scanner for Jenkins is under the available tab over here. But for me, it's not there anymore because I've already installed it. So after you've installed it, and after you probably have restarted Jenkins. If you go back to manage Jenkins, if you go to configure system, if you look under configure system, you'll see there there's a new section here called Sonocube service with some Sonocube installation details. Now it's got a name, a server URL, a server version, and a server authentication token. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to fill out all of these things and also note the name because that name is quite important because we will be using it later on when we set up the Jenkins file for Sonocube. So you'll see there's also the server authentication token that you will need and that you can get from Sonocube. So if we go to Sonocube and if we go to my account and we go to security, you'll see there's a space here to generate token. So when you've generated a token here, when we click generate, you'll see there is a new token there, right? So that token, you will copy paste and you will put it into Jenkins. Also remember, if you would, if you're going to use this token in multiple places and want to keep it safe, as this is the only time that Sonicube will show you what this token is, is after you've navigated away from this page, you will not be able to see it again. So if you do want to keep it safe, or keep it for later as remember to copy paste it and save it somewhere else but we're not going to do that for this one we are going back to Jenkins so if we go back to manage Jenkins if we go to global tool configuration you will also see there's a new section here for Sonocube scanners so if we go to Sonocube scanner installations you see I've already added one for 2.8 now, by the looks of it, there's new ones available, but the original guide that I followed in trying to install all of this went with Sonicube 2.8, so that's what I'm doing here. So, also remember, also note that this one also has a name, and this name is also important because we will also be using this name later on in the Jenkins file configuration. So, let's have a look at that Jenkins file. So, if we look at our Laravel app, if we look under the Jenkins file, you see down here there's a new section for Sonocube analysis. So remember when I told you that Sonocube server that we set under the global configuration, that name was important? This is where we use it. So with Sonocube, ENV, Sonocube. So that name comes from this Jenkins configuration under Manage Jenkins, under Configure System. That name, that Sonocube name there, it's that name over there. Those two, they link up to provide the Sonocube runner when it runs with all of these other details like the server URL and the server authentication token. Now if you have a further look in the Sonocube file, you'll also see there's a tool here, Sonocube Scanner 2.8. Now remember I also told you that the name for the Sonicube scanner under the global tool configuration is also important. But if I have a look here under the Sonicube scanner installations, that's Son Sonicube scanner 2.8. That's that tool over there. That's why that name is important to use it then. The other thing you'll note here is the agent here that I use here is master, which is this Jenkins master installation that I've got over here. 
You'll also see here that I've changed the pipeline for the Jenkins file a little bit. You'll see up here I've got an agent none now, which tells Jenkins that each of these stages kind of has a separate agent. So for the most part, we're still sticking to the Jenkins bold PHP file as a sort of agent for doing most of these tasks. Except here, down here, for the Sonocube analysis, for that we're using the master node. You'll also see that this post always, where we publish the coverage file and where we publish the unit test file has also changed. It used to be down here at the bottom. But because we specified agent none here, that won't work anymore because it doesn't know where to run this post always part over here. So we've moved it into the stage test and it will be over here. So after all of this is run, so this Docker agent by the looks of it only is relevant for the steps part. It's not relevant for this part. So this part looks like this part still runs within kind of um, the Jenkins. So the other thing in terms of Sonic Cube, setting all of this stuff up, that's quite important, is this Sonar pro Project Properties file, which tells Sonar Cube a bit about our project that we are evaluating or analyzing in Sonar Cube. So we've got a project key, which uniquely identifies it within Sonar Cube. We also have a project name here, which is that project name over there. We have the sources directory, which for us is this app folder over here with all of our code. So all of our code that we are going to write is going to app, end up in this app folder. We tell Sonicube what the language is that we're writing here, which is PHP. We're telling it the sort of encoding that we're using for our files, which in this case then would be UTF-8. These two lines, they send the coverage file and the PHP unit file the unit testing files, they send them to Sonocube. So if we look in this project, it can tell us sort of what the coverage is that we test, uh, that we have for all of our tests, which is quite cool. So, and then lastly, also, we've got this sort of Sonocube exclusions file. This tells Sonocube which files it should not try and analyze. Now for us, it's sort of the vendors directory, which is uh, the composer files. But it's also sort of these default Laravel files because what Laravel does when you install it the first time, it kind of keeps these sections around. So these sections, it keeps it around because Laravel, the developers figure, most people would probably want to do something with this section in here within boot. I mean, for me, I certainly did this in the register function. So they keep these things around so that people can get started with their applications quicker. But when you run Sonocube over this, Sonocube tells you, well, you've defined this function, but there's nothing in it. You're not doing anything with this function. So why do you have it there? So for those sort of reasons is that we exclude the default Laravel files. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of developers using these files. So and they come packaged by the Laravel developers. They're not something we wrote, so um, I think we can assume that they are completely functional and that the Laravel developers, they know what they're doing. And because for the most part, we're only really interested in things that we are doing, we can skip these files. We don't need to analyze them. And then for additional parameters here, which I'm not using at all, is you can specify some additional things. And yeah, kind of that's the set up for the two different files for analyzing a Laravel project and Sonocube. So if you have a look at Sonocube, you'll see that there's been this trend over here of a downward trend. So that downward trend was happened because I was started excluding the default Laravel files. So you can also see when I did that is sort of the code coverage started going down as well. And you can also see no duplications at the moment and no vulnerabilities at all. So if we have a look sort of at vulnerabilities, or actually just let's go to issues. Let's go to resolution of under fixed here. So it's not going to show us any of sort of the details anymore because we've excluded these files now. So it doesn't know where to find them anymore, but it does mark them as resolved because we've excluded those files. So this, this kind of gives you an idea of the sort of 
issues that Sonicube will find for you. So remove method report because it just inherits it. We don't need it. If we go to sort of this exception handler, I okay, can't find that anymore. So if we go to the exception handler over here, this is that you can see this is one of the things we complained about because we don't need to extend this because all it does, it just calls the parent class over there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the sort of issues that Sonocube will give us. And I think with that, I am done. I thank you so much for joining me in this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, please give me a like or if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And I really hope to see you in the next video. Um, bye bye, guys. Cheers.